Hey everyone, this is Mike, and a few days ago we had the live letter part 2 for patch 6.1, and in that live letter they touched upon some upcoming job changes. Now, what they talked about aren't all of the changes, so there will be more to come when we get the actual patch notes, but seeing how we do like to speculate about job changes, and also how some people have asked about what I think about these changes, I thought why not make it into a video. So let's just take it one job at a time, starting with Machinist. This one is just getting some potency boosts. I had a look at these statistics for Savage earlier, and Machinist is quite far behind the rest of the jobs at the moment. Playstyle-wise, I think it's fine right now, but it was just lacking in the damage department. So hopefully these potency changes can fix that. Samurai then got some questionable changes. So first of all, they made Midare and Oginamakiri to be guaranteed crits. This is to go against crit RNG, because they are your biggest hits. Not critting them would be a decent DPS loss, and that could just be frustrating. So it's similar to how Warrior also has guaranteed crits and direct hits on their strongest skills. So kind of indifferent towards this. The next change, however, not a big fan. So to reduce button bloat, they decided to get rid of Hisatsu Kaiten, you know, the ability you would use right before one of your EI Jutsus. Together with this, they changed potencies as to make up for the loss of the Kaiten buff, I would imagine. But the reason why I don't like this is twofold. One, it takes away from some of the thinking that you have to do, because you couldn't just dump your Kenki left and right, because you needed to make sure you had enough for your Kaiten, and that would even be more so prevalent when going into your burst phase, and then also depending on your burst phase itself, you would have to save different amounts, because the one minute burst only has Midare and Higambana, but the two minute also adds Oginamakiri on top of that to get with Sene, so it lowers the skill ceiling a fair bit. Second reason is that if they did this to reduce button bloat, then why are Shoha 1 and 2 and Sene and Guren still different actions and also different buttons? They could have easily been consolidated into one button, just make it the AoE version and have it have drop off past the first target. So they kind of missed the mark with this change, and I really hope that they bring back Kaiten. Then Ninja, they changed around how their party synergy works. So Ninja was I think the only job that still had a 1 minute raid buff left, Trick Attack. But to bring it more in line with the other jobs, they've now made Trick Attack to be a personal buff instead, and your raid buff is now Mug. So yes, it is quite a change, but in the grand scheme of things, this doesn't really change a whole lot to the job. You're probably going to be dealing a little bit more damage yourself and providing a little bit less to your team, but I'm sure that it will even out overall and probably won't really change your gameplay too much either, so I'm just kind of okay with this change. Then, Dark Knight. It's almost as if they watched one of my videos, because the Living Dead change is something similar to what I proposed. Whenever you proc Walking Dead, the buff that you get for 10 seconds and if you don't get healed to full you die, you will now restore HP upon landing attacks. I would imagine that this isn't enough to get rid of the walking dead state yourself, because it could actually be kind of bad in some very niche scenarios, but this should at least make living dead a lot easier to heal. The other tank in Vons, except Paladin, also requires some form of healing, but the amount of times that you would need to use an extra benefic or an extra cure just to top off your Dark Knight should be alleviated now with this change, and you'll probably be able to heal it with just some off-global cooldown now like you would heal a super bolite or a home gang. Moving on to Dragoon, they shortened the animation lock for the jump actions yet again. Now I feel like these were mostly fine, but if this includes Star Diver, then it is going to be a nice change, because that thing is kind of ironic. They introduced high jump to get rid of some of the animation lock of the normal jumps, but then they also introduced Star Diver at the same time, which had the most insane animation lock out of all of your jumps, so it just made no sense to me. Here's the hoping that this change will affect Star Diver as well, and not just your normal jumps. They also went on to mention that some other Dragoon skills would be consolidated and readjusted to go against Button Bloat. Kinda hope they don't change too much, because I feel like Dragoon is the best that it's ever been right now, but if this means, let's say, Fang and Claw and Wheeling Trust are now one button, then that would be a nice change, because you would always use these back to back anyways, and maybe they could also change something to the AoE combo, because it's also three buttons, but we'll see. Then, Summoner, Searing Light is now casted from the player itself and not the pet, so I'm guessing this also means that you'll be able to cast it while your pet isn't on the field, which I think is an alright change, seeing how you're summoning so often now, and the time that your pet is on the field has been reduced significantly. Takes away from the skill ceiling I guess, but it's a welcome change in my opinion. 
Then White Mage, they increase the effect radius of Cure 3 and Asylum to 10 Yalms. So that means Cure 3 is going to be hella big right now, which is going to feel so weird because this is almost twice the radius as before. But it will alleviate the annoyance of using it in non-coordinated groups. Like in Aesthetic, you can easily say stack for Cure 3 and it shouldn't be a problem. But try getting a Party Finder group to do that for you. Probably not going to be as smooth of an experience. Something they also mentioned is that they would change the mana for all of the healers in the sense that they would be using less of it. So while I don't think it's a huge deal for the three other healers, it will be a very needed change for White Mage. Also another thing for White Mage is that Lily Bell can now be ended when you want it and it will then do the same thing as if it were to run out of time where it will heal your party depending on how many stacks you had left. So again, good changes overall. Scholar has also received some minor changes, just like with White Mage, Sacred Soil has been made bigger to also be 10 Yalms, and the duration of Expedience has been reduced to 10 seconds coming down from 20. Now this is the sprint buff effect that you got from the Expedient ability, not the damage reduction effect, they didn't mention anything about that. Expedient was and is a very strong ability and it helped a lot with movement heavy mechanics on top of also adding that damage reduction. Now if you want to have the same effect as before you'll have to use your own sprint after the Expedience buff runs out to have the same duration on that sprint buff but I don't think this is going to affect the popularity of Scholar at all. Expedience is still going to be just as strong as before just won't last as long. Some other changes that they mentioned is that they will be adjusting how some jobs will feel at lower levels. Because some jobs feel kind of empty at lower levels, so they want to address that. And then in patch 6.2, they'll also be changing some stuff to jobs that are deemed too busy. And they mentioned Dragoon and Astrologian here, but that's still quite far into the future. One last thing is that they also mentioned that Warrior would be adjusted. Now, they didn't really go into detail here, but the only thing that I can really think of that they would change is the healing of Warrior, because it's kind of crazy in dungeons. The last few times I ran Expert, it has always been me on Warrior and my friends all on DPS, because there was just no need to have a healer in the party. But that's not the case for boss fights. So if they nerf the healing of Warrior, then I hope that they just make it similar to how Paladin's healing works make your life steal off attacks done and not targets hit. That way the healing isn't affected in single target fights and that way it gets the nerf it kind of deserves in dungeons. Am I gonna miss it? Absolutely, because it's a lot of fun to run expert like this, but I could see why they would change it because it is kind of ridiculous right now. But anyways, those are the changes they mentioned in the life letter. As I said before, there are more changes to come in the patch itself, but we'll find out about those when the patch notes are released, so you can expect a follow-up video on the topic when those come out. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, I want to thank my Patreons for their support, and I'll see you in the next one.